Implementing a type ahead search that executes a query as user types in keywords may not be as trivial as it may seem to be. In this video, I will show you what problems you may occur implementing such a search functionality and how to overcome these problems with functional reactive programming using RxJS. This is Angular Academy. If you are new here, don't forget to join Slack channel to discuss the topic of this video using the link in the description. Also, if you want to be on top of future lessons, click subscribe. Imagine that we have a list of records that we would like to filter based on user input. Our template for this scenario may look like this. We have an input that we will reference to with filter template variable, which you can see here. And we have a component called records table that takes as an input data source and displayed columns. Next, let's see what the records table is all about. Records table component is just a wrapper component over Angular material table that we are passing previously seen data source as an input. Later we will see how to define such data source, but for now it is sufficient to know that it defines data for the table to display. Here you can see that this table defines the structure of the material table. It defines its columns with headers and also places the data from data source inside these columns. For example, the value column definition will have a value string as a header for this column and from the single record it will take out the value and display inside this column. In order to populate our table with data we need to get the data from somewhere. Here you can see a record service provider that communicates with records API to search for the records that match my search string and returns an observable of records. This represents a result of asynchronous operation that returns the result at some point in the future when API operation finishes. Now it's the time to glue all the things together. Here you can see a records component and its property data source that is just a new instantiation of mat table data source which you saw previously. Also we have a filter object which is the element reference to the filter that we previously defined on the template of records table. It's basically this input. So what we would like to do is to listen for the events as the user types in the search string and execute the query on the fly. Because of the fact that I will be referencing filter element in the records component, I need to use after view init lifecycle hook of this component to have instance of filter element initialized. At this moment, I use from event function to create observable stream of events representing user releasing keyboard buttons during typing in the filter input element. Now I can use pipe function to apply necessary operations on every event in that stream with RxJS operators. So at first I am mapping every event from that stream with map operator to a value from the target element which is my filter input. Map operator takes every event from the stream that it is applied to and execute a function transforming each and every event. Then I am mapping again every event, which in this case it represents a value from the previous mapping and applies it as an argument to search records method from record service. Some very interesting situation happens here. 
Because records service search records returns an observable, our stream is now composed of events which themselves are observables. So we have an observable of observables. This is called higher order observable. So to be able to get the value of the nested or get the values of the nested observable and be able to consume them via subscription, we need to apply yet another operation. If we use merge all operator, what happens is that our higher order observable again becomes first order observable, merging all the values from the nested observable or the inner observable into the first level observable. So basically, let's see what we will do next. Now, as we have so-called flattened the higher order observable, we can subscribe to the results. In this case, we want to take this data and pass it to the data property of our data source. Before we start analyzing how our front-end application behaves now, let's add one more modification to our records service search method. Let's add a console log, which will log every API call in this place, showing us what search term or search string was used to call a records API. So let's see how our search functionality behaves. Let's try to find all the records with counterparties starting with gas. So I'm going to be typing G I S and the result looks like expected. But there are some problems with this approach. First of all, notice that the API was called three times with the value of search term G, GA, and gas. This looks like unnecessary waste of resources. We only wanted to look for gas search term, but all the events that were happening during the moment we were typing in also generated the API call. Second problem that we may experience here comes from the fact that all those three requests that we sent may actually not take exact same time to be executed. Imagine that the second query with GA takes much longer time to execute than the last one, which we are actually expecting to be the final query that we want the, re want the result from. But if the second query takes longer and finishes after the last expected query finishes, the result that we will see in the table would be actually coming from the second query. So how to fix those problems? First, I will reduce the number of executed API calls with the bounce time operator. Let's see how our search would now behave. The same as previously, I would like to filter all counterparties starting with gas. And now you see, again, our list is filtered, but there was only one query executed. Because when while I was typing and within the time frame of one second, there were more than one key up events, only the one that was the last one was taken into account and passed down the stream for mapping and merging. So the problem of too many unnecessary API calls is fixed with the bounce time operator. But this current implementation does not prevent from the situation that I described previously that the order of 
outgoing requests would determine the order of incoming results. So to prevent from the situation that the result table shows stale or not proper results because of the fact that the requests um, order is not deterministic, we can use switch all operator. So in this case, instead of doing flattening based on merging all the results, we want to switch to the only last unfinished query in our flow. So if the user types in a query to the filter and this results with the API call and in the meantime, during the execution of this first query, he changes his mind and types in different search term, the previous query result would be neglected. So the current implementation of the search functionality works much better. But let's enhance it even more. Instead of using map and switch all operators, we can use single operator which is called switch map which does basically the same thing. We can improve our search implementation even further using distinct until changed operator. In this case, every time the user types in exact same search term, it will be only passed down once. And if he types in a search term, then he, let's say, removes two characters and types those two characters again. And if it all happens within one second time frame, the second time this event appears, it will not be propagated or passed down the stream, preventing unnecessary API calls. Let's see it in action. I'm typing gas again. The query was executed. I will add or I will remove S and add S very fast. And you see that no additional query or API call has been executed because we set the values from the event target here must be distinct until changed. The last tip on how to improve the search implementation I would like to show you is the spinner presented on the table during the execution of the query. So let's take a look at the records component HTML. We have a div which inside have as material which inside have material spinner, which is going to be shown conditionally based on is loading value. So let's show the spinner setting the value of slow of is loading to true just before we start our query. We are going to use tap operator, which basically execute some arbitrary operation, some function in this moment before the mapping would actually happen. So just before we start our query to the API, we will show the spinner switching this variable to true. But here in subscribe is the moment when the data is back from this API and we can actually hide the spinner. So here we are going to set is loading to false. Let's see the results. Now I am again typing the query of gas. So as you saw during the moment of 
query execution, we had a spinner above the table. So that's it for today. If this video helped you in any way, please click like button and if you want to stay on top of upcoming lessons, click subscribe. See you next week.